Hi, friends. Welcome to the bunkhouse. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the bunkhouse. Stay with us. We got a great show for you. A special guest is my dear friend, Mr. Dean Smith. And out at the wagon, Bill and Clifford are cooking green chili stew. And I know that's going to make Badger real happy because that's his favorite. Stay with us. We'll be right back. In the Buckhouse is brought to you by the good folks at Cowboys and Indians Magazine, the premier magazine of the West. Pay them a visit at www.cowboysindians.com. At Cowboys and Indians Magazine, we know the West isn't just a spot on a map or a point on a compass. We know the West is a state of mind and a way of life. For more than 15 years, Cowboys and Indians Magazine has been celebrating the Western lifestyle. Join us by calling 1-800-982-5370 or visit CowboysIndians.com to subscribe to Cowboys and Indians, the premier magazine of the West. I am so proud to invite to the bunkhouse one of our very special friends, a great actor, a great stuntman, and a very fast feller. We're going to talk about that in a minute. My dear friend, Mr. Dean Smith. Dean, I am so proud that you took the time to come visit with us. It's a great honor for me to be here. Well, thank you. You've had a marvelous career in the movie business. But prior to that, a lot of folks don't know how fast you were. <laughs> And well, you're one of those very few people who owns an Olympic gold medal. And I want you to tell all our friends about that. Well, you know, I was a country boy. I lived on a farm when I was a kid growing up and uh, didn't have any bicycles or anything. So my biggest thing was to try to catch an old yellow mare. And I had to walk out there with a the bridle tied around me. And we had an underpass. And my, the thing was, I had to beat that old yellow mare to that underpass or she would go back off up in the corner of the pasture. But I guess that's how I learned to run and I uh, was very fortunate to to win the state high school championship and in 1949 I was Look Magazine All-American 100 Yard Dash and then I went on down to the University of Texas and won seven Southwest Conference titles and I got Olympic gold medal. But you know something, Red? I really wanted to be a rodeo cowboy. I didn't know I was going to get to do all that, but that helped me get in the movie business. And uh, so I'm very fortunate that I could run and had a great grandmother. Well, it made an athlete out of you. Yes, and, it, and it taught you how to handle your body and yourself. And so as a result, when you got to Hollywood and had a chance to get in the movie business, you were so athletic that you got roles and jobs as a stuntman that you couldn't have, couldn't have gotten otherwise, Dean. So all that's important. I was very fortunate that I could ride, run, and jump. And uh, I wanted to be like Roy and Gene and sing and do all that stuff. But I had a, I've had a 52-year career doing the things that uh, fit Dean Smith. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the movies you worked in and some of the people you worked with. Mm -hmm. I got my start in the motion picture business by Jim Garner, got me started mm -hmm. in pictures. I met him through an Olympic roommate, uh, J.W. Mashburn and Jim Garner got me started in pictures and then I started doubling Dale Robertson on Tales of Wells Fargo. Then in 1959 they were going to do a movie about the Alamo and I wanted to go back to Texas to work on that <laughs> picture about Texas history and Bob Mathias took me over to introduce me to John Wayne and Bob Morrison and Michael Wayne and that's how I got my start going on that big picture. And on that picture, Red, I, they had a shot where the Tennesseans were stealing all these cattle to take back into the Alamo for the beef. Mm -hmm. And they had a shot where I had to run and jump over this horse. And I ran and jumped over the horse, and it turned out to be a good shot. And an old man walked up to me, and he had a patch on it. He pulled it up, and he looked up at me, and he said, I ain't never seen nobody jump over a horse like that, and you didn't even use a trampoline. He said, my name is John Ford and you can work on all my pictures. So I got a good start on the Alamo. <laughs> what a great story. Yeah. And then 
How many John Ford pictures did you work on? I did about four John Ford pictures before he died. How the West was one shine on them. Two rode together, Liberty Balance. And uh, of course I did 10 pictures with Duke and I knew Duke's boys and his grandkids and all of those kids. Uh, I grew up with them and some of them, I, I was a lot older than some of them, you know, but I was uh, fortunate and you know, Every once in a while, about every year or two, I do a thing for the John Wayne cancer mm -hmm. thing. And you know, Red, I have cancer now. Mm -hmm. It's called multiple myeloma bone marrow cancer, and it's not curable. But uh, I have good doctors there in Fort Worth, and uh, they're treating me good. And uh, I have two sons, an older son and a younger son that's going to be 11 December the 7th. And I want to get him raised up like my older son. And uh, so I have a... I want to go to heaven, Red, but I don't want to go just yet. You ain't ready. They're gathering up a load. You ain't ready to go, right? <laughs> That's right. I don't, want, I don't want to be on that load. <laughs> Talk to us about the Duke. What kind of person was he? And how did he treat the other people around him? He treated us cowboys and stuntmen really good. And he wouldn't ask you to do anything that he wouldn't do himself. Mm -hmm. I had a great love for him and his family. Um, I admired him. He presented everything to me that I liked. He was uh, just something that was an exception. And look, after all these years of him being gone, how important he still is to all of us. But I'd just like to say, Red, how much I respect you and what you stand for. And you're carrying on you. the tradition of us Western people. And it's something very important that we do. We need to cultivate these youngsters. And we need to get them to liking these cowboys and Indian pictures. I love playing cowboy and Indians. <laughs> Let's keep it up. God bless you. You too, Dean. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. You folks, stop by your local newsstand and pick up the latest edition of Cowboys and Indians magazine. It brings you the beauty, the grandeur, and the drama of the American West. Hang on. We're coming right back. At Cowboys and Indians magazine, we know the West isn't just a spot on a map or a point on a compass. We know the West is a state of mind and a way of life. For more than 15 years, Cowboys and Indians Magazine has been celebrating the Western lifestyle. Join us by calling 1-800-982-5370 or visit cowboysindians.com to subscribe to Cowboys and Indians, the premier magazine of the West. A little while ago, the boys and I were hanging out in here playing cards and dominoes, and there was a smell came through the window that was just unbelievable. Now, Badger made the statement that he was sure he knew what it was. He's got a nose like a bloodhound, and there's every chance in the world he was right. You know, Badger was telling me a while ago, he said, that smells like green chili stew. He was and, right. Well, he was he right. Was right. <laughs> well, tell us how you fix a green chili stew. First well, of all, I want to know about green chilies. Okay, I'll tell you, that's one of the most important things. We put these right directly over live mesquite coals. And that mesquite coals give it a really good flavor. Red, we have some uh, beef strips cooking, cooking right there. Uh, getting them kind of brown. Let me grab that off of the fire right there. See, it's still hot and sizzling right there. Now, Bill... Is this the green chilies that you've already got smashed That's up? That's the green chilies that we've already done. We've got onions and sauteed in here right now. We're going to mix this. Okay. Put the green chilies in here. We're going to put these in. These we chopped in. We're done just like those. Uh huh. Except then we're going to mix this in right here. It's pretty green in it. Pretty good. Beautiful. Pretty. Sure smells good. Right. That's going to be good. Okay, and here we have uh, oregano and cumin. That's uh, about a tablespoon each. We're going to put that in there with it and mix that up. Just give it just a little bit of extra little flavoring. We've got to have a little broth going there. Excuse me, Red. Do that. Sarah, that's going to be... Pretty close to being enough right there. Then what we're going to do is take these our strips and lay these in there and kind of decorate that around. 
put those together like that. And after we get that on there, what we're gonna do is put it back out there on the fire and we'll be ready. Have a good little dish of green chili beef stew here. All right. At Cowboys and Indians Magazine, we know the West isn't just a spot on a map or a point on a compass. We know the West is a state of mind and a way of life. For more than 15 years, Cowboys and Indians Magazine has been celebrating the Western lifestyle. Join us by calling 1-800-982-5370 or visit cowboysindians.com to subscribe to Cowboys and Indians, the premier magazine of the West. One of the greatest cowboy poets of all time was a fellow named Ray Owens, lived over in New Mexico. And when they sent me his book, we lost Ray not too long ago. And I miss him because he sent me the greatest poetry. This one is called The Saddle His Granddaddy Rode. Just a dusty old saddle with rolled under skirts. Its fenders were curled up and cracked. It hardly resembled how it looked in its prime when it sat on a good horse's back. The carrot once got had been traded for heedless neglect and abuse. A cast off, discarded old relic for which no one had any more use. A pair of rusty old spurs were dangling from the horn which was rope burned and scarred because its owner had taken his dallies instead of tying his line fast and hard. The offside stirrup was missing. The latigo age cracked and worn and the foresail sign taped to the cantle somehow made it look more forlorn. For more than a year it had been on display and only a few had inquired about its price, its condition or history, what events in its life had transpired. Then one day a young man came into the shop and asked if the owner was there. The shopkeeper said, yes sir, that would be me, as he slowly got up from his chair. How much for this saddle, this old one right here, asked the lad in a soft-spoken tone. That's an antique for sure. A sheep shopkeeper said, but one that you'd be proud to own. I'll take one hundred dollars, no more and no less, and throw that old pair of spurs in the deal. I should be asking more, but I'll let it go cheap. At that price, it's really a steal. From his pocket, the young man pulled out what appeared to be just about a month's pay. He laid out the cash in the shopkeeper's hand and seemed ready to be on his way. But the way that he picked up the saddle, in a manner part reference, part awe, caused everyone watching to wonder if there wasn't more there than they saw. Still, the onlookers snickered and one laughed out loud while the shopkeeper tried not to smirk. Many times he had offered to sell it for 10. And folks told him he had gone plum berserk. So the shop owner ventured a question. What's so special about that old cack? You handle it like it was made out of gold. Maybe I should be buying it back. The young man said, well, sir, I'll tell you. Something I reckon nobody knowed. To me, it's dirt cheap at five times the money. That's the saddle my granddaddy rode. Well, as my old daddy would say, we got this one saucered and blowed. It's time for us to ride on out of here. We hope we taught you something about the cowboy you didn't know or maybe brought, brought back an old memory. Before we go, I'd like to leave you with this thought. The nice thing about horses is that some engineer doesn't redesign them every year and make yours obsolete. An old boy named Anonymous wrote that. We're glad he did because we sure love our horses. The boys and I would like to invite you to listen to us on Cowboy Corner on your local radio station. Go to your local newsstand and pick up the latest edition of Cowboys and Indians magazine. It brings you the beauty, the grandeur, and the drama of the American West. But most of all, Jake and old Dan and Leon and Badger and I would like to make sure that you're going to be right here in the bunkhouse with us next week, same time. Adios, my friends. <laughs>